Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here with the latest update on our powerhouse storm heading our way tomorrow. Tuesday is a day we want you to stay weather aware. You can see the timing about 7 a.m. or it's 9 a.m. to about 7 p.m. though. It is picking up speed. We are noticing something and I'll talk about that. The whole system is moving a little bit quicker um, and it really for even yesterday, probably about six hours quicker and I think even right now maybe an hour quicker than this morning. Wind, rain, and severe storms. In that order really the biggest threats and the combination of the wind and rain is going to cause probably more issues i don't want to downplay the severe weather risk because it is really high especially for coastal south carolina and north carolina and areas to our south the midlands to the coast but for the western carolinas it's probably the least of our worries honestly though it just adds to the overall threat so let's get right to the details i'm going to go to the maps first here i'll kind of show you what's going on across the country i'm going to move my head out of the way we'll move myself up here in the corner the leading edge of the rain is not that far away. In fact, if you look back to the southwest, there's a lot of moisture heading your way. I'm just going to look at the radar. We're not going to turn on the clouds. Um, you get the idea. There's a lot of rain on the way, folks. And I'm already starting to see some non-thunderstorm wind damage reports from northern Alabama telling me that the winds are really beginning to pick up. But anywhere in the, back in here is where we're seeing the strongest winds with that southerly flow. Now, I showed a graphic earlier tonight. And a lot of folks were a little confused by it, and it's probably my fault. I'm, I apologize for it. But I, what I was showing you was the low-level jet. This is the winds at 5,000 feet, not at the ground. Now, it's still important for the ground. We're not going to see 75-mile-per-hour winds at the ground. We could see a gust with some of the stronger storms. But the fact that that is only about 5,000 feet off the ground, that's the thing that's shocking because that's really close to the surface. And if you get rain or storms, or let's say you're a mountaintop that's at 5,000 feet, or a tower, or anything, you're gonna be right in that. So it doesn't take much to mix that down to the surface. The mid-level jet stream as well, which is around 15,000 feet, is a powerhouse too. That's like 150 to 170 miles per hour. Then you go up to the main jet stream, which is at 30,000 feet, it's equally as strong. So there's a lot of wind energy over us. That's at the end of the day, what this means and for that reason that's why we've all the wind advisories and all of these uh, various wind warnings right now we're under a wind advisory for most of the area um, that does include areas um, from the mountains where there's under a high wind warning all the way to the coast where there's a high wind warning as well so you get the idea I mean look at all these wind warnings that is a lot of wind the whole east coast is going to be impacted by significant wind we've also got the heavy rain risk which I talked a little bit about you see that risk for heavy winds um, for sure, but the heavy rain, you combine that with trees that get uh, in saturated soil, not going to take much to cause scattered power outages. Now, let's talk about the severe weather risk quickly. There's the risk tonight. Tomorrow, you see our area. I'll show the whole Carolinas. The higher risk is obviously for most of mid and southern parts of South Carolina and then parts of North Carolina, but I'll zoom in our, our area real quickly there. And you can see uh, we're kind of in that medium risk. Uh, to the south, it's a little bit higher risk. Now we break this down by the types of severe weather. Damaging straight line winds. Um, this is pretty fascinating to see this because we're in the 15% probability, but you see the hashed mark, these these lines? Uh, the Storm Prediction Center puts this out when they think there could be gusts to 75 miles per hour. Typically severe damaging winds are 58 mile per hour gusts, but there's a chance that some of the thunderstorms could produce 75 mile per hour gusts. So that's where that 75 mile per hour gust comes from. That would be from thunderstorms, not the winds in general across the area. Now, the tornado risk. Now, it's not zero in our area. It's about 2 to 5%, but just in the southeast, it's 10%. And that's significant because not only is there a 10% chance of tornadoes there, there's a chance those could be EF2 to EF3 or 4 or 5. So more significant risk. And just to show you the tornado parameter, um, I think this really helps show how great or, or how low, actually, the, the risk is. It's not off the charts, folks. That's why I'm not, could there be a tornado? I don't think it's gonna matter because the winds will be so strong. It's gonna be hard to tell what's tornado damage and straight line wind damage, but you're not seeing off the chart tornado parameters in our area. If you go south and east of us, it's certainly much higher um, in areas of South Carolina. And then if I show this a little bit further out, you can see, yeah, especially around Wilmington, that, that's a little bit higher out in that area. So let's get to the timing. I'll show you future casts in a minute, but most folks, you know, they're joining me right now. They just want the nuts and bolts of this. So I'm gonna shrink my head down a little bit here. I'll put myself way over here in this corner. And you can see above my head, I have all the risks. Severe storm, power outages, high winds, and flood threat. Looking at the timing, 
um, starts in the morning. Everyone's going to see rain when you wake up. It'll be raining. Winds really pick up after 9 a.m. And then middle of the day starts to taper off after 7 p.m. But remember, the power outages could linger because the ground gets saturated by the all-day rain. Winds are still gusty even though they come down. So you could get some delayed reaction for power outages. And the high wind and flood threat will linger a little bit as well because it's still going to be gusty. And remember, runoff of water takes a while. So some of the creeks and streams might take a while for them to eventually kind of fall down. And just to give you a rough idea, this is for the Charlotte area and the metro kind of area. It kind of shows you the general gist of the wind speeds here. I'll put my head back over here. The top number, the wind gust, hour by hour. Now remember, I posted my weather grid earlier. And people are like, oh, it doesn't look that bad. Remember, I'm not posting every single hour in this graphic. This is every two hours. The weather grid's every three hours. There's hours in between where the gusts could be higher or lower, but there's, there's data not in there. So this is kind of giving you a general idea. I will show you every hour, though, right now. Let's go right to the future cast. So what we're going to do with the future cast here, I'm going to show you everything. We're not going to hold anything back. I'll make my head just a little bit bigger there so you guys can see Raleigh. So we'll scoot over just there. So here we are tonight. Now I'm recording this at 9 o'clock. Um, so you're getting pretty much live information. By midnight, probably going to see rain getting close to the mountains. Yes, there could be winter weather in the mountains. Believe it or not, there is a winter weather advisory for counties up there for a brief mix. It will not last long because that, that low-level jet's going to crank up and push warm air in here. So 3 a.m., it's pouring. 4, 5, let's say you guys get up at 6 a.m. Not me, maybe you. 6 a.m., you're up. It's raining, especially in the mountains and foothills. Winds are not gusting. These are gusts, 25, maybe 30, so not bad. We get to about 8 or 9, gusts start picking up a little bit, maybe 35, 40 in a few spots. We get to about 9 o'clock. Uh-oh, the winds. Look at these winds. Now, here's the rain, right? Thunderstorms, even outside the rain. Look at the wind gusts. We've got some 40, 45 mile an hour wind gusts. It's not even raining in those spots because to show you it's outside the thunderstorms, right? Go a little bit further, 10 a.m., ooh, winds are picking up. I'm seeing some of the first 50 mile per hour gusts. Let's go to 11, still in the 40s, 50 in Gastonia. We move a little bit longer, 11 a.m. So you're probably wondering, man, the winds don't look too bad up here. Well, if there's wedge of cold air, that might initially help them out, but I don't know how long that's gonna hold on. These winds eventually are gonna erode that. So there's a chance, if there's an area that sees less wind, it's probably right there in the foothills in, the, in, in, in that area. Your strongest winds might not happen until later. So here comes the front. Boy, the winds are really picking up. So here's your 40 to 50 mile hour gust. And you know, I would say top end, maybe 60, unless there's a gust in that line that gets to 70. But I think 40 to 50 miles per hour, maybe 50, I'll put 55, because I'm seeing some low 50s here. I, that's why 40 to 60 makes the most sense. Everyone looks, oh my gosh, 60. But remember, 40 is the low end. So 40 to 60, it's like snowfall. People only look at the high number. They don't pay attention to the low number. 60 is the high end to kind of cover yourself that, yeah, there could be a gust up to 60, but most of them will be in the 40, 50 mile per hour range. So then by 2 o'clock, it's still raining, but the front's pushing east. Uh, by 3 o'clock, still raining. By 4 or 5, starting to taper off a little bit. By 6 or 7, most of the worst of the rain is gone. But the winds, again, not as strong as the middle of the day, but they're still howling. We're getting gusts to 30 here. It's been raining all day. Tree could come down still. We go into the overnight. Look at the winds. They're picking up still. I mean, it's still howling. Remember that low pressure. And look at the gusts now. Midnight. Tomorrow night. Still have gusts 35 to 40. So it's not like the winds are like that low. They're just calmer than they were. And yeah, snow moves back into the mountains on the backside. We go into Wednesday. Still breezy day. Wednesday afternoon starts to calm down. Once you start seeing gusts less than 20, that's a much calmer setup. So what about rain? I get a lot of questions about how much rain. Tons of rain here. Two to four inches, especially in the mountains and foothills. I mean, this is an area where we're seeing a lot of rainfall in the last couple of weeks. So we're already seeing some flood warnings for like the South Fork of the Catawba because of the runoff that we're anticipating that we're going to see some flooding in there. So yeah, I'll move my head right here to get out of Raleigh. We'll move it down this corner. But you get the idea. It, it's going to be coming down as we go through the day. And that's why the power outage index is pretty high tomorrow because it is that dreaded combination, you know, of having basically strong winds and then you couple that with saturated soil. It does not take much to cause, you know, power outages. So that's why we're being being very cautious with this setup. So what are some of the things you could do tonight? Um, if you have time to still do it, I would take every opportunity to do this if I could. Um, I would go out, secure loose items around the yard, 
make sure uh, there's no patio chairs, umbrellas, flags. Remember, yeah, they could blow away. It's great, you lose it. But the worst thing is that becomes a projectile or missile that hits your car, your, your window, your screen door, or your neighbors. Uh, so flying debris becomes dangerous. That's what makes wind dangerous. You know, the wind itself, not that bad. It's what the wind pushes or pushes towards you. We say that in tornadoes all the time. Keep your phones fully charged. Make sure you have a battery backup tomorrow and definitely prepare for the possibility that you're not going to have power. And as always, I will put a big push for our WCNC news app. I will move my big ugly head out of the way, put it over here, scan that QR code. If you're not on your phone right now or you're watching on a computer, um, if you don't can't scan because you're actually watching me on your phone right now, go to WCNC.com. You can download our app. It's great because if the power goes out, you can still get notifications and streams like this and my vlogs, you'll get notifications of those as well. If you don't watch them on Facebook, YouTube, the app, doesn't matter. People always say, oh, I don't get you on TV or I can't wait. Doesn't matter, folks. We're on the web. This amazing thing called the internet. You can watch me and this station anywhere in the world. You don't need a certain cable, satellite, service, antenna. All of our newscasts are streamed on our website, Amazon, Roku. You can watch it all for free as long as you have internet access or cell service. So grab our app and that's the place you can do it. I will post updates tonight. I'll see you at 11. I will do another vlog early tomorrow morning, but I will be in early to work tracking all this probably mid to late morning. So sorry for the long-winded vlog, but wanted to give you as much information as possible.